Hi, I'm Anita Koza, and I'm from Minneapolis. Hi, I'm Marge Charmley, and I'm from St. Paul. Welcome to Buy Cities, a program by, for, and about the Buy Plus community and our friends and allies. We are absolutely thrilled, Anita. <laughs> we are. We have been on COVID leave for the last two and a half years, and this is our first show since March of 2020. And we are on location at the Because Conference, which is now 30 years. Wow. Going. It's a long time. And well, how long have we been going, Anita? <laughs> We have been going for 20 years. 20 years. Mm -hmm. And if that's not... And one month. And one month. <laughs> and if that's not enough to be excited about, we have a guest with us today who has got not only impact but longevity. I used that when I introduced her a number of years ago, and it's still true. But before we introduce our guest, we have a kind of sad announcement. We are doing this inaugural show of the beginning of our, our second, hopefully, years of filming. And we want to do this in honor of our beloved lighting engineer and our floor manager, Tom Lisford, who passed away suddenly this past spring. So Tom, the lights aren't as you would have them, yeah. and the floor is different, but your spirit will always be with us. And, you know, it's hard not to talk about Tom without getting teary. But Tom was with us at the first show through the last show that we ever filmed. And he was when, on more shows than you and I, Anita. Yes. So of all the people in the world that did buy cities, Tom was the longest. And so we are eternally grateful to him. I suspect he's here. We call him the laughing buff Norwegian, so he's probably <laughs> giggling on the other side of the veil over there. But... Um, we, we do want to honor that. Yeah. So. Yeah. And if you're wondering how could he have been at more shows, it's because sometimes Marge or I would be gone and just one of us would be hosting the show. Exactly. So that's yeah. why he's done more shows yeah. than we have. The times when we couldn't bilocate and be on <laughs> the camera. So, you know, so Tom was there. But we have a very special guest with us and someone who is internationally known, nationally known, the world over, I mean, you name it. And we are so excited and thrilled to have with us Robin Oaks. And if you don't know Robin, you don't know bisexuality, because Robin is almost synonymous with that. But certainly with you know chronicling from the beginning, because Robin will be celebrating 40 years this next year in, yes. in 2023 of all of her work uh, with, uh, I, I have to, I want to say it right, so I'm going to ask Robin to say the right name of, of the uh, organization that she started and she's been doing all these years. By Women Quarterly. By uh, Women yes. Quarterly. Women yes, Quarterly. yes. Thank you. Robin. Wow. It's wonderful. From Boston. <laughs> from Boston. From Boston. Welcome to the Bi Cities. Thank you so much. And you are always so special. I mean, you're so accommodating, you're willing to be with us. And, you know, it just elevates the show, doesn't it? I'm not just willing to be with you. It's an honor to Aww. be here with you. Aww. Thank you very much. And I don't say that to everybody, but I, I mean <laughs> that. I really do mean that. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, I have something to start with, which yes, is that last please. month, September, was my 46th anniversary of identifying as bisexual. So well. I have to say it has been one interesting phase yeah, so <laughs> what's different now compared to then in the bi world? Everything. Everything? Everything and not enough. Amen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. some of it's still yeah. the same, isn't it? Yeah, but on, I mean, there's so much more representation in the media, in pop culture. There are so many more people out. There are so many more people identifying. Oh my God, so many more people identifying as bi plus. Um, and you know, when I think about, like when I look at the, the Gallup, for example, in our age group, and I think we're all in the same general age group, it's less than 1%, no, less than 1 of people in our age group um, report identifying as bi. But when you look at Gen Z, it's 15% identifying as bi of all Gen Zers. And so like, that's a huge, I'm not good at math, but that's, yeah. that's yeah, about, yeah, a 20, yeah. about a 20 times increase. 
And so like there's, there's so many more people identifying as bi. There are so many more resources out there. There are TV shows that have bi characters that aren't horrible. Yes, yeah, yeah, which that is aren't sick. Yeah, totally yeah, different. Yeah. yeah. And um, th those are the good things. And the bad thing is that we still don't have enough funding. We still don't have enough resources. We're still not visible enough. There's still a lot of biphobia out there. But I do think that we, I, I felt that for many, many years, I didn't feel that we were making progress. Mm -hmm. And then something changed in the last decade. In the last decade. And we are making progress. It's just, you know, we have a, lot, a long ways to go, but it really is changing, and that makes me happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. as it should. Well, you know, there continue to be new people who watch the show, and so I'm wondering if you could just confirm a definition for bi plus and the Gen, Gen Zers, are the 20 to 30 year olds? Or the 30 to 40? No, um, 18 born, to 25. Yeah, they're the younger, the youngest group. Ah. And they're not even 18, some of them aren't even 18 yet, ah. so Gallup okay. doesn't even count them. Ah. Gallup only counts people 18 and over, so all the Gallup data is only the old Gen Zers. There are still some younger folks who haven't entered into the data stream yet. So, so teenagers yeah. into their mid 20s. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so there, there are some major, major changes. And actually another change, now that you just asked about definitions, is how I, I think we changed how we think about the word bisexual itself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because when I first came out as bi 46 years ago, I understood bi to be attraction to men and women. Mm -hmm. Yes. And now the definition has changed dramatically. When I think about bi now, I call myself bisexual because I acknowledge in myself the potential to be attracted romantically and or sexually to people of more than one gender. Yes. Not necessarily at the same time, not necessarily in the same way, and not necessarily to the same degree. So it's a much more expansive definition of bisexual. It doesn't require experience. Mm -hmm. Yes. It doesn't require that you be 50-50. It doesn't require that the types of attraction you have be exactly the same. And it, it's just a much broader definition that I think invites more people in, which is probably some of why more people are identifying that way. I think before people say, oh, if I haven't had an equal number of relationships with. Yeah, we had to be 50-50, yeah. you know. But and yeah, a lot of people yeah. felt like they, there's a lot, there was a lot of um, by imposter syndrome. Like, I think I feel like I'm bi, but I don't think I have the right to call myself that yeah. because I haven't had the experience or I haven't had, you know, 50-50 level of attraction or, you know, whatever reason. And I think that's changing. And also I think another change is the, the alphabet explosion. Mm -hmm. Yes, that yes. I think that the bi, well, bi is often referred to now as bi plus, which includes pansexual and fluid and omnisexual and all the other different words yeah, that yeah. people used to describe attractions that are either between or outside of the gay-straight binary. Yeah. I like that personally, and I like it for us as people who call ourselves bisexual. Yeah. That, you know, it doesn't have to be anybody who's con concrete. What, are they, what is it? You know, bisexual does not mean binary. Yeah, yeah. And so... Yeah, yes. and the bi and bisexual, instead of meaning attraction to men or to women, now means attraction to one's own gender or two different gender or yeah, genders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. You know, another change is that it's finally being acknowledged that we are not the unicorns in the alphabet soup GLBTQ, yeah. that we are the majority of yeah. the queer community. I know, I think the yeah. Gallup data showed that we're 57% of all LGBT people Oh my God! Yes, We're still fighting for di visibility. <laughs> it's it's amazing. Yeah. And actually, another another. Um, now I forgot what I was going to say. It was something smart. It was <laughs> or interesting. And that's at least. smart. What you're saying right now is really smart. <laughs> we like that. I'll come back so to it when I remember. Yeah, yeah, you know, we'll <laughs> if I remember, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. It'll come back in your sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right after we finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we'll have to add it in. <laughs> you know, but Gallup data of 57 percent of people who identify as GLBT are identifying as bisexual. By, by plus. By plus. Because by plus. Gallup doesn't ask about pansexual identity. It gives a limited menu, so mm -hmm. there are a lot of different people squeezed into that into that B. Well, you know what I was kind of thrilled to hear about and, and mystified as well in some ways? Our youngest crew member, Emerson, mm -hmm. came to Anita and I and said, hey, 
bisexuality is cool now. Uh, wait a minute, we fought for so long. You know, it was bi, and then it was bi plus, and then it was this and that. And now it's like, oh, this is cool now. It's like, well. In a few places, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. well, here, at least in one. Yeah, so. But it's interesting, because now, I, I hope that that's meant with the idea that there are lots of us, because before, it would people would say, oh, you're just trying to be cool. You're just you're not really oh, yeah, by, yeah, but you're yeah, just yeah, saying yeah, yeah. it to be yeah, cool. Yeah, and I, yeah, I thought yeah. that doesn't. I'm not getting a cool response when I do yeah. say that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, another thing I wanted to add is that um, when we, when I said that bi are the largest group within LGBT, some of the other data that is out there now shows that a very very large percentage of trans and non-binary folks identify as bi plus, okay. a much larger percentage than cisgender folks. And also, bi plus folks are more represented, not as dramatically, but more represented than, than white identified folks in, um, also in bi plus identities. Wow. Yeah. So did I understand you right in, the, in person in people of color? Yeah. Oh my gosh. More yeah. people of color are identifying as bi than white people? Did yeah. I get that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's not a dramatically larger number, but it is a, wow. a, a larger percentage. I mean, that's pretty awesome, because historically that's been it's still hard for the uh, BIPOC yeah. community. Yeah, Lauren Beach has, has shown me some data about wow. that that has been very exciting. Yeah. yeah, and you and her are presenting today. Lauren and I yeah, are presenting yeah, yeah, today. Yeah. And you are too, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So things have changed. Some things are the same. You left Harvard. Oh, thank goodness. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I worked at, at Harvard for 26 years and as a department administrator, and I left to be a full-time activist, advocate, um, speaker, writer, and just to do all this stuff, but do the stuff that I was squeezing into the margins yeah. to center that work and, and finally do the work that I wanted to do. And it's, really, it's been a wonderful, it's been about f perhaps 14 years since I left. And it has been wonderful. Yeah. Well, yeah. What, uh, what's the variety of audiences who are asking you to come to speak? Well, one of the ways that my work has changed, I still do a lot of campus work. I love, mm -hmm. I love working with students. They're, they're amazing and they teach me, I think they teach me as much as I teach them. It's a wonderful, every time I learn something new, it's been just amazing and it opens my mind and it keeps me current with what's actually going on as opposed to what I read about in books. Mm -hmm. And another place that I've expanded my work is I'm doing a lot more workplace speaking. So oh, I've been okay. speaking at a lot of the larger workplaces like Dell yeah, yeah. and okay. places like that. And I've also been doing more bi plus health work. Okay. So speaking to healthcare providers. Yes. Cultural competency Wonderful. training. Oh, so fabulous. Yeah. And that's been really interesting. Um, and I've spoken to random different groups. I spoke to a dental school the other, I think it was in September. Um, I've been doing just random different audiences and just to help people understand what it, when we, like what keeps us from, because we, Bi, Bi Plus folks actually access medical care at lower rates than, than straight people. And you know there are reasons for that. So like trying to unpack what are the reasons, what's going on, and what can medical providers do to make people feel more welcome and more comfortable. That is awesome. You were recently in Washington, D.C. I was. At a policy conference I for buys. And what were some of the things, you know, the highlights? So in, in kind of in a tradition, we, we went to the White House. We had a Buy Plus event at the White House in 2013 and 2014. 14 in 2016, then a long gap. Yes, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> we were not welcome at the White yeah. House yeah. for a while. Yeah. Who's so, in, in, in office? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not sure that I would have felt comfortable going had I been invited. Exactly. But yeah, we yeah, weren't. Yeah. We, yeah. we just simply weren't invited for yeah. several years, and now we're back. It was by erasure, you know. It was more than that, yeah, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So what happened um, this year is that we reached back out to them. And we ended up having a policy meeting on BiPlus Health. Um, we had 15 folks representing us, and just an amazing intersectional group of people from all over the country. It was wonderful. Oh. It was so wonderful. And it was wonderful to be in physical space with these amazing yes. people who I admire so much. And then we met with people from HHS, from Health and Human Services, mm -hmm. and representatives from the White House. And we 
had this meeting where we just talked about, we laid out some of the data, the statistics, um, and some of our asks, some things that we were hoping that they will do to wow. start to pay attention to the needs of BIPLUS people since we are such a big group of people. Yes, yes. Yeah. So how did you present those requests? As fast as we could. <laughs> we, it was a very short meeting. It was, it was a challenge. But we actually, we actually had it set up so that all of us spoke. Oh, that's 15 people. But it was seamless. Wow. It was seamless. So one person would stand up and speak, and then the next person would continue. And it just it went, it went better than, because I was imagining a horror, horror like yeah, a yeah, yeah. absolutely horror show of you know, everything going wrong. But it, everything went right in terms of the presentations, and we were just seamless and everybody's voice was heard and people spoke you know, in their own area of knowledge and expertise. We had a, people from lots of different um, fields ranging from just like community members to you know, experts and specialists and psychologists and therapists and, and so on. It was great, it was absolutely wonderful. And, and then we had time for a short conversation with HHS folks, but we've asked, we've asked them to do a few specific things which I hope that they that some concrete action happens. I know that there are already a few follow-up meetings happening right. as a result, so that's oh. hopeful. Was Jennifer Levine one of the people you met with? Mm. Was Jennifer Levine the assistant oh. secretary? Uh, Rachel, um, Rachel Levine? Is it Rachel? Rachel. I'm sorry. No. no, but there was actually um, someone who works for her was there. Okay, good, yeah. good. She was represented in the room. All right. And that's yeah. the yeah. armed services? Is that correct? No, she's a department. She was at WPATH. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. But, but she's from the military. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah she's an admiral. What what her position is, so people who don't recognize yeah. that. Yeah, Assistant is. Secretary of Health and Human Services, I believe. I think that's correct. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah, so it was it was it was really it was it was a good 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 experience and we had a big buy event the night before. Uh in the community and, and just had a lovely, it was very, it was just lovely. It was absolutely oh, lovely. Nice. And they were, as usual, there were some people who had never been to any kind of BySpace before oh, ever. Oh. And you know, just watching how excited. That's such a goosebump experience. Oh. I mean, it just, it, it just it's, it gives me chills. Yeah, like yeah. Just, just watching how much it meant yes. to create those spaces yes. and like the power of being in a space like that for the first time. and how far that can go to challenge our feeling of invisibility and being alone. It's, yeah. it was just beautiful. Yeah. 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 Woo. All right. <laughs> well, I Thank remember you, coming to gosh, Because right. in 1992 and it was like a spiritual experience yeah. almost. I mean, that, that whole sense of wow. And that's the yeah. importance of the spaces like Because. Yes. Because, because, because. Because, because, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It just, it just, it's, I think one of the challenges of identifying as bi is that you know, sexual orientation is not visible. And you don't know, not only do you not like have a lot of information and, and visibility in the media and other places, but you don't know who around you is shares your identity. And so yes. it's so easy to feel like you're the only one, like everybody else. You know, in, in mainstream culture, we assume that everyone's straight until mm -hmm. we know specifically that they're not. Yes. Um, and in the LGBTQ spaces, we assume that everyone is gay or lesbian, mm -hmm. unless we know yes, specifically yes. that they're not. And so for bi folks, like there's no space that you can go in and feel like everyone is like you, except yeah. places like yeah. the Because yeah. Conference. Yeah. And well, we don't have to explain or back up the train to get people on board and all yeah. those important things. And I love inclusive spaces where everybody is at the table as well, but. Yeah. But I think that sometimes we need a little dose of vitamin B plus. We need to get yeah, into I spaces. Like I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To get into yeah, spaces yeah. where it's just like our space, and yeah. like you could just yeah. look around. And nobody's going to say, "No, you're not," or "I don't yeah. believe you," or yes. "You're not bisexual enough," or like just to have a, a space where you are fully validated. Yeah, exactly. And where that is unquestioned. Yeah, I like that. I do too. I still like that, even after all these years. Oh, I know. It's so I meaningful. still feel yeah. like it's like an infusion yeah. of nourishment. Vitamin B plus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And thinking about, you're saying that you went to the first conference in 90... 1992. Two. Uh, my first conference was either 98 or 99. And it was just like, really? All of these people? But at first I was like, but I don't see anybody who looks like me. But it was like, doesn't That's matter. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, know, we, yeah. We don't look like each other. Yeah. We look like ourselves and everyone was here feeling that kind of, of 
joy. Everyone was there. It was at the University of Minnesota. Yeah. So um, uh, I see we've got five minutes left. So there's something, whatever you would We want like you to take to it away. Well, right? I'm going to just what? follow on a word that you just said. Use the word joy. Um, one of the things that I've been thinking about a lot lately, and we'll see what happens with this, but I've been thinking about the idea of by joy. Huh? And, you know, oftentimes we focus on the disparities and how hard it is and how isolated we are and all these negative things. And I think that is really important to talk about because it's real. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm coming to understand that we need to talk about, there are some great things about identifying as bi. And, and I, I now, when I first came out, I don't think I perceived it as a gift, mm -hmm. but I do now. I think it's given me a unique perspective. It's, I've been introduced to things and people and communities and all kinds of things that I don't think I would have otherwise had access to, and it, it really is a gift. And if someone told me, here, you can take a pill and not be by anymore, I would say, no, yeah, get yeah, that thing yeah. away from me, because I really do like being, I love being bisexual. Yeah, yeah, it took me a long time to love it, too. I mean, I was so scared, and it was so invalidating for so long, but yes. And I like the resilience piece of it. That's part of the joy, and what's good about it. And I remember maybe the last time I presented that, because what's good about being bi? Yeah. It's both and. I mean, there are a lot of things. We could probably just pop off a bunch of things about. One of the workshops I used to do was called Living in All and Identity in an Either-Or World. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing I think I'd like to touch on is, is just ways that we create visibility and the ways that we move the conversation forward. And, and you're supposed to say, what's one of those ways? What is one, one of those, those ways? ways? Well, <laughs> now that you ask, <laughs> sorry, please, <laughs> now that you ask, yes. one of those ways is, is through sh putting our voices out there and sharing our words. I think that by cities is a wonderful way to do that. And I think a print equivalent of by cities might be by women quarterly, yes. you know, the idea that, you know, we have this quarterly publication that we actually offer for free. It doesn't cost anything. And anybody of any gender and any sexuality is welcome to sign up to read it. Reading it will not turn them by if they're not, and it won't turn them into women if they're not, but it's the voices of women yes. and also non-binary folks yes. you know, who opt into that space. Just telling our stories and every issue has a theme and we talk about different things. The um, current issue is parenting while by plus. Ooh. Oh man. And the one before that was pop culture. The one that's coming up next is on bodily autonomy Feminism and choice. Wonder why I picked that topic. Gee, I can't. I imagine. don't know. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, and then after that, we're doing a bi plus history issue. Oh, all right. So just like to go through all these things and just to lift different voices, and every single issue has people who have never written before. That is awesome. Yeah, and also people who have written a lot, like just like yeah. the huge range. And I try to make sure that we have this huge spread of every possible intersection of identity that is out there, and we have more and more people writing from outside the U.S. That's great, wow, that's which great. is really exciting. Yeah, and they're and it's and I don't have to work at that anymore. It's, it's happening. Like people, yeah, yeah, are, they're coming to you. We're getting this wonderful, diverse writership, and it's just I think, but I think things like that are super, super important. Yeah. So we have less than two minutes, and so well, we want we need yeah. yeah we need to bring it on home here. Yeah. But, Robin Oaks, we love you. We love you in the Bi Cities. Thank you so much for being on and for the work that you do. You know, as I said, impact and longevity. And, you know, there have been times when we almost went off the show, off the air, because we didn't have enough juice to keep the show going, just with staff or whatever. But you have been there and you've kept it alive. And that is so important. So thank you, Robin Oaks. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Thank you and our audience. And by the way, I don't know that we mentioned, we are now in the Gene Treader collection. So at the University of Minnesota, it's the largest collection of bi-video material in the world. So please go on board and we'll have a thing and we are getting the wrap. So, so let's look at the camera. Our signature goodbye. And Robin, I Remember think Remember what it is? One. Bye for now. <laughs> Bye for now. Yeah. Bye for now.